thanks for joining in and watching this video here and uh we're just gonna be tying a mini dolly llama for our april subscription box for our intermediate tying box that we do if you want to learn more about our tying boxes you can go ahead and look for our website link in our youtube profile and you can learn more about how to get all these awesome materials that we send out monthly so for this one, like I said, we're going to be doing a mini llama. You can see I've been tying a couple of them here, just the different color variations that we have, have for this box here. That's olive and black. And then I have a olive and ginger one that I've been tying. So uh, four different color variations you can work on, work with as far as uh, four different rabbit strip colors that you'll be getting in this box. And it's a super simple tie, I think, as far as uh, articulated streamers go. It's a really good one to use for swinging streamers. Uh, for all you guys that love to, to throw streamers and that, this is a good one to have in your box there. So we did this a uh, year or two ago, actually. We had a bigger hook. So we've downsized the hook here and made it a little more streamlined, I think. I like the smaller version of it. So I'm just going to start with my... Uh, Daiichi stinger hook here in the vise. I have it upside down. I'm going to leave it like that for the duration of this tying video. And I'm just going to coat my hook shank, the flat portion of the hook, with a layer of thread there. So I'm going to uh, do a black profile here on this pattern. So I'm going to start with my black rabbit strip. And this is the reason we have the hook upside down in the vise, just makes it easier to punch this rabbit strip onto that hook. So I'm just gonna take my black zonker strip here, and I'm gonna leave a very small tail hanging off the back. I don't want a big, long, flowing tail on this fly, um, because this back hook acts as your tail pretty much in that articulation, with the articulation wire that we will end up putting on here. So I'm just gonna take a very small piece of the end of this rabbit, punch that on, Try to center that the best you can onto that leather strip. And then I'm just going to go ahead and just take that out of my vise. I'm just going to move it down here to where my thread wraps are and then reposition it in my vise. I'm just going to gently pull on that rabbit strip. Part that hair right where my thread's hanging at. And bring my thread up and over. So I just want to make sure, this is why we use this thicker thread too. We want to make sure we clamp down pretty good on top of these rabbit strips here so they're not going to be twisting around or moving on us. And then I like to come right in front, add a few wraps right in front, and then we'll whip finish. You could add a drop of, of a super glue here too if you like. I like to try to keep that free of the Zappa Gap. I just don't like that it kind of turns it white as well. So try to keep it off of my rabbit strip the best I can. Okay, so the back portion of the fly is done, simple as that. So you're just punching that rabbit onto the hook and then tying it down nice and tight. And so you can see here, we're gonna have that little tiny rabbit strip there that's just hanging out the back, that's all that does. This portion is gonna be the portion that's gonna be swimming and moving, acting as our complete tail. So I'm gonna fold my rabbit strip back out of the way. Okay, so our next step after we have our rabbit strip secured and we've done our whip finish, is we're just going to take a piece of this braided line here. This is going to be our articulation for this fly. And what I've done is I've just cut a six inch strip and then I've just folded it in half. I found um, with this, when you cut, when you're cutting it to kind of wrap it around your scissors and pull down on your, on the line and then cut, it can be a little tricky to cut unless you have super sharp scissors. So just be aware of that. I'm just going to take this, um, the tag ends of this, line here and push these up through the eyes so i'm coming up from the bottom if you don't get a clean cut that sometimes it's hard to uh, feed through the eye there and then i'm going to bring it back through the loop and then there's two ways to do it you can either just cinch it tight right there so it's pulling around right in the front of the eye I like to let it kind of sink back up on top of the eye and hold right there just like that. Just adds a little bit of strength to the fly. Okay, so we're just going to leave that hanging out the front now and we're going to switch our hooks. So we're going to take our Mustad hook here. This is a size 6 um, S74S. It's basically just a saltwater hook, straight shanked saltwater hook, straight eye as well. And we're just going to feed this. 6.3 brass cone onto the hook 
and kind of have to force that up and around that barb. You could push the barb down if you wanted to, make it a little bit easier as well. We're gonna cut that um, hook point off of this hook anyways. So if it bends a little bit, it's not a big deal. We're gonna end up shortening this up and cutting it back here and just making a straight shank. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is we're gonna start our thread. I'm gonna start my thread right where I'm gonna be tying in my braided line and also my rabbit strip. So I'm just gonna add a few wraps here just to secure that down. Now I'm gonna take my back fly, back portion of this fly here, and I'm just gonna line this up. So this is where you're gonna get your measurements. So just remember this behind your line here is gonna be cut off. We're gonna leave a little bit of a nub so your line doesn't fall off the, the edge there. But we don't want this to be super long. If you have it back here, it's too long. It's gonna end up fouling up on you when you cast and when you're stripping it in the water. So I'm gonna shorten it up. I'm not gonna have very much of that line actually exposed. So um, not very much at all, maybe about the length of of what we're gonna be cutting off of the hook. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap that line down first. I'm just gonna keep that right on top of the hook shank and just secure that with half a dozen or so wraps there. Now I'm gonna feed those tag ends up through my cone. So once they're up through the cone, I make sure that it's coming right up through the top and I'm gonna feed them down through the hook eye, pull those through and then back through here again. So just go right back through the cone. And then I'll pull each of those tags, just like so. And then I'm just gonna wrap down with my thread, come up here behind the cone, and then back down to my tie-in point. Again, this is where having a good sharp pair of scissors is nice because this braid doesn't always cut super well so you just want to okay so now we're ready for our next step so here we're just going to um, we're going to pull on this back hook i'm just going to grab that by the bend of the hook and i'm going to pull tight so that line is tight what i don't want to do is have the rabbit strip tighter than the line because what will end up happening is all the pressure when a fish is on will pull on the rabbit strip and not the braided line so I'm gonna be pulling on this. I'm just gonna find a nice part here in the rabbit strip so it's straight. Come down, I'm gonna hold that, pinch that down on top of the hook shank with my right hand, bring my left hand up and over with my bobbin and secure that rabbit strip down with three or four good tight turns of thread. And I'll pull down tight, make sure it's cinched down good. And now I can fold this rabbit back And then I'm gonna bring my thread forward to right behind the cone there. Okay, so again, you just wanna do a double check. You just wanna make sure that, that, um, that the back hook, whenever it's being pulled on, there's tension added to it that's pulling on the thread, not the rabbit strip. So I got it just perfect there. If you don't have, if the rabbit strip's too loose, then you end up with a big bump of rabbit there and you don't want that either. So just kind of a nice, happy medium. And then we're gonna take some Zappa Gap. I just like to just kind of brush this along the thread wraps just lightly. You don't need a bunch here, just to kind of help hold that rabbit in, make it a little more durable. And now we're just gonna turn this rabbit strip up the hook shank. And as I do so, I'm gonna do one full turn here to cover up my thread wraps. And then I'm gonna wrap forward. And each wrap, I'm taking half of that strip and covering up half of my last wrap. That just helps hold that rabbit back so it's not standing up or facing forward. We want that rabbit just to kind of naturally flow back. This is also a point where you want to make sure you don't stick your finger with that back hook, as I've done many times, and end up with a Band-Aid. So, good sharp hook. I'm just gonna wrap this forward here. I like to get this pretty tight against the cone. You just, you just gotta be careful that you leave yourself some space here to be able to um, tie this rabbit strip down, because we wanna tie it down underneath the cone, not up on top of it. So if I kind of pull, you can see how that rabbit wants to kind of turn a little bit. And then I'm just gonna check that's about right where I want it. So there's not a lot of wiggle room in the cone head. So now if I pull that rabbit strip forward, it almost creates just a natural part in the hair. And I'm just gonna bring my thread right up and around that. Anchor that down tight with three good turns. And then 
you just kind of crank on that with your thread. So that's where having that thicker thread comes into play as well, so you can add some tension to it. Okay, so I'm just going to come in now and cut that rabbit flush against the cone. And I'm just going to finish wrapping that. I want to just kind of hide that leather piece there, so I just kind of tuck that up underneath the cone with my thread wraps. And now I'm ready for uh, my secondary strip of rabbit. On this one, I'm going to use olive. I'm going to put it right on underneath the cone here. So I'm actually going to flip my vise. I'm going to take just a small strip of olive rabbit. And I just want this to be about the same length as my fly is already. So I'll just take the little point of this leather strip here. I'm just going to center it just right here on the bottom of the fly. And if you kind of grab it by the very tip and then pull forward, whoop, that didn't quite work there. Kind of grab it and then cinch it up and under. It'll kind of pull it up and under the cone for you. And then I'm just going to come back through and grab that with a few more good thread turns there. And I'll trim this all up here at the end. Okay, so now we're ready for our last part, just adding some flash. So we're just going to be adding some polar flash to this. So you got a mix of kind of a chartreuse color with some gold in it. I like this color variation. So I try to get a little bit of both colors here. I'm just gonna take three or four strands of this. I'm just gonna place it right against the side of the fly. Come around and just tie that right to the side. You can move it around as you need if it rolls on you a little bit. And I'm just going to fold it back, the rest of it. I don't mind if there's a little extra flash in this guy. It just adds to this fly, I think. And so I'll just take the next clump here. I'm just going to tie this in on the side facing away from me. Just kind of hold my finger close to where my thread wrap is going to be. That will help that flash from not rolling down underneath the hook. Tie that in with a couple good tight turns. And then I'll fold it back again and add some more thread tension there to it and that'll hold those that flash back okay so now we're we're, we're done with this fly here we're just going to whip finish and then i'm going to add a little bit of super glue just underneath the cone and I just take the nozzle of my zappa gap and then just let it trim this guy out now you have a nice little articulated streamer and there you have it so there is your Articulated Dalai Lama, smaller version there. Works really good, swims really well. Equally effective for trout, salmon, steelhead. Uh, good warm water fly as well, I think. So you can add a bunch of different